surprise announcement. Dalton trustees are moving to hire former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot to investigate their mayor, Tiffany Henyard. The resolution states the trustees are moving to appoint Lightfoot as additional legislative counsel to look into allegations of financial issues. She will also look into accusations against a Dalton trustee accused of sexually assaulting another employee. That allegedly occurred during a village-sponsored trip to Las Vegas last year. Mayor Henyard, meanwhile, is accused of mismanaging funds and is facing multiple lawsuits. The Board of Trustees says it is proposing to appoint Lightfoot as additional legislative counsel because she is both a former mayor and a former federal prosecutor. Now, the board will vote on the resolution at a special village board meeting Monday night. If approved by the board, Lightfoot's law firm will charge $400 per hour for her services. The Dalton trustees are considering hiring a devil to fight the demon. Could this be a fatal mistake? Or could it deal the death blow to the tyrant dictator? We're about to explore all the angles while public sentiment and sympathy for the Dalton trustees and residents takes a serious hit. And we'll examine some possible considerations we might not have thought about as of yet. So let's go political. All right, welcome to the Go Political channel. I am Carlton Flowers, and I want to say welcome back to all of the returning viewers and welcome aboard if this is the first time that you've stumbled upon the channel. Okay, so today in this video, we're going to be discussing the battle in Dalton as it is coming to a head. It's getting critical. With the recent news of the potential hiring, it hasn't happened yet, a former city of Chicago mayor and prosecuting attorney, Lori Lightfoot. So the story is building up like a wildfire around the world. We have a very large viewership. It's almost like the movie, The Truman Show. And this irony, the irony of this potential hiring is palpable. So we're going to take a look back at some of Lori Lightfoot's past. We'll explore a couple of highlights, a few news stories, and then we'll review the current situations, bring in a few clips about what is going on right now. And then we're going to discuss the pros and the cons of this potential move and try to determine whether or not this will end up being beneficial or detrimental to the citizens of Dalton. Now, a little bit of housekeeping for those of you who do not know the reason why I am covering this story. I was born and raised in the south side of Chicago, about 20 minutes drive away from Dalton. I still have family all over the city of Chicago. We moved to Missouri when I was at a very young age, but continued to visit Chicago on a yearly basis practically all of my life. Now, I've been studying the situation here in Dalton with this new mayor and the board of trustees that have been fighting this fight for the past two years. Now, I'm not here to provide breaking news and new information. Let's make that absolutely clear. I'm here to give my own commentary and discuss what is going on and hopefully provide some insight and help those that are involved. So watch my prior videos if you want to get some more framing of the situation. And I encourage you all to watch the deep dive that I did about dealing with narcissistic leaders, especially in government. It's the video before this one. Uh, so please go back and enjoy that so you can get a little bit of framing for what we're about to jump into today. Like and subscribe so you don't miss my updates on this story and commentary. So with that, let's take a look back at some of the news surrounding this situation and then we'll move forward and have a look at Lori Lightfoot. All right, cut to clip. 
Now to Dalton, where big moves are expected at tonight's village board meeting. The board is expected to take action regarding Mayor Tiffany Henyard's veto into an investigation into herself. Nate Rogers joining us live from Dalton with more on what's expected tonight. Nate? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, Sylvia and Scott. Good evening to both of you. It's expected to be an interesting Board of Trustees meeting here at Dalton's Village Hall. To say the least, we're told community activists and residents will be calling on a trustee accused of violating a former employee to step down as the FBI continues to investigate practices here. Now, it is their first meeting in over a month following several challenges the mayor and village now face, Dalton Mayor and and Thornton Township Supervisor Tiffany Hingert has been criticized for mismanagement of funds and ongoing tensions between the Board of Trustees. Multiple lawsuits from Dalton business owners and four former village employees have also been filed. Most alarming, the meeting comes amid a sexual harassment and retaliation complaint against Hingert. A former employee says she was sexually assaulted during a work trip in Vegas last year. The complaint says the employee was, quote, disoriented and unsure how she woke up inside a village trustees hotel room. Now, when she spoke about it, um, the former empl employee claims she was retaliated against and later fired. We must add that no one is in custody and no charges have been filed following this complaint. Now, back out here live, we have been told from multiple sources that the feds have spoke to nearly a dozen of Dalton elected officials, former employees and residents so far. Again, that board of trustees meeting is tonight at 6 30 of course we'll stay on this story continue to update you throughout the evening on the latest here in dalton i'm nate rogers fox 32 chicago so there's your background on the situation and basically the mayor decided to veto the move by the trustees where they voted to investigate her spending and also investigate the situation that went down during the trip to Las Vegas, where they were there for possible economic development connections, finding new vendors, and bringing business into Dalton. So as a result of that, the Board of Trustees had reached out and decided, well, we need help. We need help from the state of Illinois. We need help from possibly the Attorney General, the FBI. They reached out to several agencies. And as we all know, this is dragging on and taking a long time. And of course, the reasons why that this investigation and coming up against the mayor and trying to put all of this to an end is going to take a long time. And you can watch my previous video summarizing why this process takes so long. So that brings us to the next step where the Board of Trustees has come up with the idea to put this on the fast track and bring in a former prosecutor who could possibly get this situation resolved and bring some charges to stop the reckless spending and also get a decision on the Las Vegas situation. Let's cut the video. A familiar face is being asked to investigate allegations of corruption and misconduct in South Suburban Dalton. Former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. CBS2 investigator Megan Hickey joins us now. And Megan Lightfoot would be tasked with investigating accusations against Dalton's mayor. Right, Jim and Joe. The proposal from a group of Dalton trustees seeks to appoint Lori Lightfoot as an additional legislative counsel. Lightfoot would be hired to look into allegations that Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard misspent taxpayer money and that she tried to hide allegations that a Dalton trustee sexually assaulted another Dalton employee during a village-sponsored trip to Las Vegas. Back in February, village trustees in South Suburban Dalton called for an outside investigation into allegations Mayor Tiffany Henyard to the best of my Congratulations. has been misusing public funds while the village is millions of dollars in debt. Trustees say they need to see proper documentation surrounding Henyard's spending, including lavish trips and extravagant dinners, taxpayer-funded billboards, and other advertisements. Those trustees believe the best outside investigator for the job 
I feel very, very good about our record of accomplishment. Is former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who left office in May. Lightfoot, also a former federal prosecutor, joined Charles River Associates as a senior consultant to the forensic services practice in March, according to the firm's website. Discussion and approval of the resolution is on a special board meeting agenda for Monday at 6.30 that will take place at the Dalton Park District Amber Room. Okay, so this brings us to the crux of the situation, because obviously, um, public sentiment has tanked as far as sympathy for the Board of Trustees and citizens of Dalton. Why? It's because there are several similarities between Mayor Tiffany Henyard and Lori Lightfoot, former mayor of Chicago, who is being considered, of course, to take on this case and rapidly bring it to a close. So let's take a look at some of Lori Lightfoot's most memorable moments that reinforce the drawing of these similarities between herself and the mayor. But then we're going to break this down and discuss whether or not this could be a detrimental move or a power move for certain reasons. Let's cut to the clips. New at 5, a defamation lawsuit filed against the city of Chicago and Mayor Lori Lightfoot. The politically explosive complaint alleging Lightfoot blocked a potential compromise with Italian Americans over the controversial Columbus statue. Some of the explicit language in the court documents is raising eyebrows tonight. WGN's Julian Cruz is in Chicago's Little Italy community with reaction. Mayor Lightfoot, do you have anything to say? Are you going to talk to the Italian-American community? Mayor Lori Lightfoot not taking questions after a downtown event in the wake of a defamation lawsuit filed yesterday in Cook County Circuit Court on behalf of now former Park District Deputy Counsel George Smear Neotis. You may remember back in 2020, unrest over the Grant Park statue, Columbus, a controversial figure to many for what historians say was a brutal subjugation of Native Americans. As a result, Chicago's mayor ordering the removal of several Columbus statues across the city. You bleeps, what the bleep were you thinking, she's alleged to have said. You make some kind of secret agreement with Italians. You're out there measuring your blank with the Italians, seeing who's got the biggest blank. The mayor pictured here at today's gathering of the Council on American Islamic Relations, verbally attacking then Park District lawyer George Smear Neotis on the Zoom call according to the lawsuit. The mayor allegedly adding, I am trying to keep Chicago police officers from being shot, and you were trying to get them shot. My bleep is bigger than yours and the Italians, and I have the biggest bleep in Chicago. All right, that was pretty brutal. So we can see some similarity there with uh, former Mayor Lori Lightfoot and her foul mouth and brazen nature. Certainly is much more well-spoken and educated than Tiffany Henyard, but definitely a similarity with the brashness um, and having no filter when speaking. So something else of a similarity that we'll have a look at is the constant discord in city council meetings. We're going to take a look at a clip and see a reaction going on between former Mayor Lori Lightfoot and one of the Board of Aldermen. Let's cut the clip. We're going to Alderman Harris. And unraveling at City Hall after the mayor lost support for her pick for the city's chief legal officer. Then the mayor called Alderwoman Jeanette Taylor, who was opposed to the back of the council chamber. I'm like, lower your voice and get your finger out of my face. And so she did get her finger out. You see me doing this. And so I'm holding my skirt. I'm saying, get your finger down. She got her finger out of my face, but she kept screaming at me. Alderwoman Taylor says the disagreement was not over the mayor's pick, but rather the city's position on moving to dismiss a lawsuit by a woman whose home was wrongfully raided by Chicago police in 2019. The mistake was caught on tape. After the council meeting, the mayor released a statement saying in part, today a small group of aldermen brazenly created a spectacle and did a disservice to their constituents. As a result of their cynical actions, the city council failed to pass protections and relief for our hotel workers. When asked if the mayor is losing control of the council and respect from aldermen, Taylor said this. 
ever since COVID, you don't want to work with people. You pick and choose who you work with. This is not how the city, we're never going to get anywhere if we all don't work together. All right, so I've got one more clip that I'm going to include here of Lori Lightfoot from the past where you're going to see a similarity um, with Tiffany Henyard where she basically denies and deflects and demeans whenever she's confronted um, by this reporter who disagrees with a decision that she made. So let's check out this reaction in this clip. Here we go. Mayor Lightfoot, you're patting yourself on the back today for rushing through a casino that 80% of the people in the new 42nd Ward say they just don't want. Um, we have, uh, you're saying that this is going to, if it's ever built, that is, result in tourism, result in um, conventions. But the real reason why we don't have the tourism or the conventions is because of violent crime. You issued a violent tweet, called arms, and since then, we've had multiple instances of mob violence in downtown Chicago. We've had shootings, murders, mass shootings. You talk about Texas. Mass shooting here in the Sir, city is of Chicago. Sir, is there a question? There is indeed. What is it? There is Let's indeed. get to it. Let's get Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. A speech is not what you In fact, you went to, to Texas. Let's get to you it. You went to Texas. Please, please get to your question. Well, if I may I ask my question. You went to please Texas for a gay and lesbian fundraiser, okay? I've talked to the, ta to the taxpayers, the voters, the, the citizens of Chicago, mostly uh, black and brown. They say that they resent that. Will you recall, rescind your violent tweet to uh, call to arms. No, let, yes let, no. It, let him, let him talk. The more will he talks, you, the more stupid he sounds. Please continue. Will you rescind your call to arms tweet in the light of the mass shooting in downtown Chicago? So, as stupid as you think that may be. So let me just deconstruct. You, let me just deconstruct the series of lies that you just spewed, as you do every time you come to one of my press conferences. Number one, our tourism numbers are off the charts. McCormick Place um, is about 90% a capacity from what it used to be uh, pre-pandemic. So that's lie number one. Lie number two is that um, somehow the, the call to arms, the call to action that I issued in the context of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade and basically turn back the clock 50 years time where women are not going to be able to be in control of their, of their bodies. No, sir, I will not. I will not stand down. I will not retreat because women in this country are not going to stand for some unelected body to tell us that we don't have the right to control the circumstances and the way and where in which we uh, produce our children. So you, 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 you're going to let me speak, sir. You're not going to talk over me. That's not the rules here in this press conference. And if you don't want to abide by those rules, you can take your nonsense someplace else. Because I am about full up with you. Craig Wall, ABC. I'm not finished. Let me just finish. And the, and the nonsense that you're spewing, that tourists aren't coming to our city, all you have to do is walk up and down the Michigan. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You will stop speaking. You will stop speaking. You're, you're, you're full of crap. And that's the nicest thing that I can say. Okay, enough of the similarities. Now we need to bring this all together and break it down. Now, keep in mind what you just saw with that last clip because some of what we are seeing with those characteristics and personality traits is going to play into part of what we are going to analyze as we break down the pros and the cons. Okay, so before we get into the pros and cons. Let's just look at Lori's background. Okay, so Lori Lightfoot was the assistant U.S. attorney from 1996 to the year 2002. And while working as a federal prosecutor, Lightfoot helped to prosecute those accused of federal crimes, including drug crimes. Now, remember one thing that I said in a previous video, I have a sneaking suspicion that some of these tree, tree removal contract expenditures could be some money laundering. There could be something going on behind the scenes. So just file that in the back of your mind. Let's continue on. <clears throat> 
Lori Lightfoot assisted with Operation Silver Shovel, an FBI investigation into Chicago corruption. All right, now that's key. She assisted in an FBI operation. All right. So, of course, she goes on to become one of the worst mayors in the history of Chicago, where her term ended in 2023. So that's the background. That's what we're looking at to give you a little bit of insight why the Board of Trustees would reach out to her. So let's look at the cons. Let's explore the cons of such a decision if they do move forward in hiring her. Well, one of the cons has already happened. We've seen um, public sentiment. It's it's pretty much it's tanked, and there's a lot of sympathy uh, that has just evaporated. There have been a few somewhat derogatory videos that have come out. We saw Black Conservative Perspective, which I do love his channel, um, but he really did degrade the trustees and the citizens of Dalton, and I don't necessarily think we're at a point where we can just denigrate everyone and say that they're all stupid or, you know, they get what they deserve. Now, there was a, a little bit better of a video that came out that was put out by Hannibal is Hungry. And this is the one where I saw the majority of the comments where you pretty much got a good idea about public sentiment. We're talking about the viewers all around the world, not just in the city of Dalton. So after this video was put out by Hannibal is Hungry, um, people came out of the woodworks and were saying things like, okay, if they pick Lori Lightfoot, we're done. We will no longer sympathize. We are finished with this. Let it all crash and burn. They'll get what they deserve. Um, what else do we have? Other cons. Well, it, it will be expensive at $400 an hour. So that's a possible con because we don't know what uh, the cap on the spending could be. I mean, it could be anywhere from tens of thousands of dollars to possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars hiring a law firm at 400 bucks an hour because it's not just going to be the time for Lori Lightfoot, but all of her assistants, legal assistants and attorneys that work on her staff. So we don't know if such an expense is going to be um, something that the citizens <clears throat> are going to agree with, and that's why they're going to have to put it to a vote and hear uh, feedback before it goes to a vote um, before that hiring. Okay, what else do we have? Um, one dangerous thing that could be a con is the fact that Tiffany Henyard, who we know is a uh, seasoned narcissist, a highly skilled narcissist, she could possibly flip this back on the trustees and burn the building down with it, as she has done with every topic to date. We know that she has this infamous ability to take accusations or when facts are presented to her about things she's done wrong or expenditures or writing checks without signatures, she just takes it and flips it around, throws it right back in the face of the trustees and residents and just hits them with a flamethrower. Every day. I mean, every day. And this is something, I don't know how she could, but I know that she's a lot better uh, with her prison mentality and streety nature. I'm sure she's going to come up with a way to flip this and burn them with it. The building is on fire, fire. But we'll have to see. Um, something else. Possibly that Lori concludes this entire investigation and gives Tiffany Henyard a clean slate. I've heard that mentioned in the comments. What if they spend all this money of 400 bucks an hour only to come to the conclusion that, oh, well, didn't find anything because Lori Lightfoot is um, cleaning to party lines and it's not going to come up against a fellow Democrat. That's possible, but wait until the next section because I do have a refutation for that one. I don't agree that that is a possibility. <clears throat> Last but not least, will the Democratic Party allow this to take place? I mean, we've still got powerful Democrats in the state of Illinois on the state level. We've got Democrats on the federal level who are aligned with Tiffany Henyard and your lovely president, Joe Sleepy, Joe Biden, <laughs> invited her to the White House, handpicked her to come and celebrate the greatest mayors around the United States. So are these folks going to sit back and allow Lori Lightfoot 
to rip her a new one. That is yet to be determined. Okay, so pros. What are the pros? Let's see if we can come up with a few ideas and angles where maybe this is a good move. Now, up until now, reading all the comments on Hannibal's video, you wouldn't think that there could be any pros because people are basically saying that if you are aligning yourself with a curmudgeon like Lori Lightfoot, what does it say about your own morals? Do you not have a moral compass that you're fighting this demon over here and then you're going to align with another demon while you're accusing this person of being the devil? That's what we're up against, but could there possibly be reasons to justify this where it is a good decision? I'm not saying that it is. I'm just presenting all of the angles. So let's look at the pros. Number one, it could put closure of this situation on the fast track. You saw my previous video where I gave you the reasons why this investigation is dragging on so long. We already know the Board of Trustees and citizens have reached out to the state police, they've reached out to the Illinois AG, the prosecuting attorney, the mayor of Chicago, the governor of Illinois, they've reached out to everyone, the FBI, you name it. And how long is it taking? It's going to take a long time, and there are reasons. If you want to see those reasons, skip back to the last video, the breakdown, and uh, it's the one linked in the description, and you will see why it's taking so long. So a big pro could be that pulling in an outside attorney could put this on the fast track to closure. Next, the extensive experience of Lori Lightfoot as a federal prosecutor. Okay, so some people said, hey, keep her out of it, let the feds and everyone handle this and just give it time. But Lori Lightfoot was a fed. Lori Lightfoot did work with FBI investigations. If she has that experience, don't you think she knows the methods or ways to work with the FBI and understanding what she can and cannot do in order to help assist and bring information to the FBI so they can bring this to closure? I would say that's a major benefit, okay? Um, if she is not still connected at the hip with the Democratic Party, since she is not in office, maybe she could operate as a prosecutor, as an attorney, and get the job done. What else do we have? Well, um, to this point, to this point, nobody, and I mean nobody, has been able to match wits with Tiffany Henyard in person. <laughs> she wins the arguments in the meetings. She is an expert in the art of gaslighting and reversing situations and uh, the only win that I've seen as of recent, of course, is the walkout when Jason House brought it to a vote and ended that last meeting. But up until that point, Tiffany Henyard has ruled the roost. Now, one thing I said in the beginning, could it be that it takes the devil to fight the demon? <laughs> Now, from the video clips that you've seen and many more that are out there on the web, I think we can see that Lori Lightfoot uh, is a different kind of demon. <laughs> With her foul mouth and her brashness and her willingness to fight, I kind of compare her to a pit bull. Now, if, if you're going to have a prize fight, you know, between two juggernauts, you know, this could be like Mike Tyson versus... Um, Holmes or Tyson versus Holyfield and Tiffany Henyard is the Mike Tyson who are you going to bring to that fight who are you going to bring to try to take down the Tyson who is at the head of this current regime what would you view Lori Lightfoot as she could be the Buster Douglas to the Mike Tyson or worse now in my opinion looking at the levels of tyranny uh I'm going to say that Lori Lightfoot is more of a pit bull and she has a bigger bark and bite than Tiffany Henyard. And I think the advantage is, A, she's an attorney. B, she's been a bigger fish in the political pond. C, she's far more educated than Tiffany Henyard and her 
fake diplomas. I don't believe for a doggone minute that Tiffany Hinyard has a college degree because she can't even speak sixth grade English. But we'll keep that for another video. So when you are as well-spoken of a pit bull as Lori Lightfoot is with an attorney license behind you, I think she is going to have much more of an ability to dole out the damage than what Tiffany Henyard will have using her expertise to gaslight, argue, deflect, and not allow people to speak. So if I'm going to put money on this cockfight, I'm putting my money on Lori Lightfoot. And in fact, I'm looking forward to this like it is the next Mike Tyson fight. I would pay money. This could be a pay-per-view event. If we can get Tiffany Henyard and Lori Lightfoot in the same room battling it out at a city hall meeting, I'm paying. I'll pay 10 bucks to view that, 50 bucks. So hey, Dalton trustees, if you want to raise some money for the city, if you want to erase that $8 million deficit that Tiffany Henyard ran up on you, well, just have a pay-per-view event when you bring in Lori Lightfoot, if you hire her. I'm not saying that you are, but I think you could erase that entire $8 million debt if you have a pay-per-view event and open up this meeting to the world for money. <laughs> okay, here's another point that is a pro. So some people were saying, and this is refutation of the point that was made during the cons, that you could pay this attorney all this money and end up with a decision that is, oh, she's got a clean slate. Slate. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Attorneys work for money, and many attorneys don't have a soul. They will go to bat for an individual who is guilty, and they will throw every wrench that they can into the gears, into the system, to prove a reasonable doubt, and they will argue the principle of the matter. Well, what if this person really wasn't at the crime scene? What if this video was a deep fake and it's not real uh, surveillance camera footage? What if the glove doesn't fit? If you're old enough, you know what that is referencing. So they don't care if they know fully well that a person is guilty or not. They're going to prove their point because that's what they're paid to do. So I think that it is rather preposterous to think that the board of trustees could hire Lori Lightfoot at $400 an hour to come in and give, give Tiffany Henyard a clean slate. It's not going to happen. Even if Tiffany Henyard was innocent, innocent of all accusations and charges, when they hire an outside attorney, that attorney is going to prove that wrong, even if she is innocent because that's what the attorney is paid to do. That's how they operate. Now, we know that there's probably a lot of allegations that are going to ring true. So if they plop down that $400 an hour, I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance that a pit bull like Lori Lightfoot is going to bring it to the light. One other point uh, that I have here that is a pro Lori Lightfoot is obviously a, a feminist, a vicious feminist at that. Um, so what do you think is going to happen with her fighting against a sexual assault case against another female, a female victim? I'm kind of thinking that she would fight vehemently for that. Um, I'll put my money on her. So those are the pros. Those are the cons. I am just watching the fight, I'm hoping that we do get this fight. I want to see it. I'd pay money to see it. I'm not saying that I'm for or against Lori Lightfoot. As you know, I'm not a fan of Lori Lightfoot and her politics, and I'm not a fan of the devil Democrats of this day and age. So please, please don't get it twisted. I'm not taking sides. But I'm going to say that the pros kind of outweigh the cons here where I could see this working out and it might end up being a good decision. Now, it does come at a cost of public opinion. However, if they communicate a few things, if the Board of Trustees communicates a few things and makes it clear to the general public that our hiring of Lori Lightfoot 
does not uh, it does not indicate an agreement with her prior political record. It does not constitute agreement with her beliefs, or it does not condone her prior acts, her outrageous acts while she was mayor. If they make that clear, it could work out. It could change public sentiment, because I think one of the things that people are screaming about is that they think that the trustees, if they move forward with this, are showing an alignment to Lori Lightfoot that they don't have a moral compass because we're fighting this devil but hiring this other one and saddling up to her and making an alignment. But I think if it is made clear as their reasoning um, and then to strike through anything that does not support their reasoning, it might work out. It just might work out. Okay, so in conclusion, let me just say a couple more things to all the people that are, you know, throwing out pretty vicious comments comments out there about this potential decision. I would just say hold off for now and and don't don't judge yet. Definitely don't judge the people of Dalton. I don't think that's fair to say that these people get what they deserve. The people are not in power. The trustees do have a certain amount of power, but there's only four of them fighting. Okay? So we can't say they get what they deserve because there's no city in the United States or in the world that deserves the treatment that these people are getting. We don't want that for anyone because we have at least um, a fundamental level of humanity, all right? So we need to be careful and not passing judgment until we really know the facts, okay? And I'm careful, even though I am not a fan of Lori Lightfoot, I'm careful about making judgmental comments myself. Um, an interesting side note, uh, Lori Lightfoot is from the same hometown that my wife went to high school. She's a little bit older than my wife, uh, but my wife and her family, they know the Lightfoot family. It's just uh, kind of an interesting little side note. So we're going to have to wait and watch and see how this plays out. And instead of passing judgment I'm going to reach out to Edward Steve and ask if he'll come on the show and do an interview or maybe some or all of the board of trustees so they can share their thoughts and give the reasoning and maybe make clear some of these things that we would like to know. So if you would love to see um, former trustee Edward Steve to come onto the Go Political channel posted below, I'll reach out to Mr. Steve and say, hey man, the gang, they want to see you. Can you come on and pay a visit? So that's uh, possibly going to come up pretty soon here. So look for it. Now go back to my prior videos. And again, I encourage you to watch the breakdown in the, pre the previous video where I explain to you the deep dive in how to deal with narcissistic tyrants who are in leadership positions. I gave a lot of of great information in that video and I want you to see it and let me know if that's useful information to you. We're going to go ahead and cut this one. That's all I've got for this edition. Thanks for watching. I'll be back back very soon with a report after the meeting on Monday. This is Carlton and I am out.